going live right now. Hello everybody, we're uh, just a little slow out of the gates here for this big C division match today between Mike Fabrizio Smith and Danny Finn. Hey, if you got a paper, I'll record. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, oh. Things are a little hectic here early on, but we'll get there. Danny, being a Ryan's employee, he's at the desk acting like he knows how to run every Ryan's. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I thought that was, uh, apparently I don't know how to work my own goddamn tripod. Sorry, oh, sorry for that language, especially on a Sunday. All right. All right, sorry for going live. As soon as I did, the two of them just took off. So they're both at the desk at this point. Danny's buying a can of water because you can't buy plastic in Yarmouth. And uh, Mike's just chatting his ear off. Oh man, I swear we have a bowling match coming. It's gonna be Danny Finn versus uh, Mike Fabrizio Smith of Yarmouth, or in Yarmouth, whatever. I went live at the exact perfect time as you two both just peace out. <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess we're just settling on a 7-7 draw here today. So thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> Here's one of your presidential candidates just has entered the camera. Although Abstain's making a big push, you know, late, late in the afternoon. So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, the, uh, the bowlers are voting for next year's president. Oh, looks like they're ready to start. Okay, so approaching the lane first is Danny Finn of... Uh, Hey, Danny, where do you live? Franklin. Franklin, Mass, which is right next to his home lanes in Mills, Massachusetts. All right. And his first ball, right where he wants it to be. One-two pocket. Leaves himself a nice little 3-6 with a piece of wood off to the right. He's going to want to be on his object here, though. The wood's only going to cover the six. And he is. Two objects right out of the gate, and Danny getting that first elusive, sometimes can be elusive mark out of the way. Big first mark, especially when you're on the road. Big match for Dan Finn today, who is in a, in a battle for the last playoff spot in the C division. Phil ball right back on the head, but a little more full. Leaves himself to spread eagle left with the 6-10. That's three for three on objects, though. Four for four on objects, but a little full this box, leaving himself with the, uh, the wings here. Oh, and his first miss of the match, so he gives himself a six there. Still puts himself one over par, as Bob Lee would say, uh, giving himself 21 through two boxes. 
That puts him on a 105 pace and a 525 for the day. Let's see if he can improve on that. Oh, and Hammer coming back from the, the tough six box and he tosses a absolute crushing Hammer right in the 1-3 pocket. That was pretty much a no-doubter. For those wondering who this amazing commentator is, I am Peter Ischitelli, and I will be with you today. Now, that's the point, Mike. So if it, like you get a nine drop, but it registers a strike, this way it won't reset on your, your butt. I almost said the A word, but not on camera. Danny's first strike, Phil. That's why he. That's why they turned it off. It's to prevent the camera resetting when it's not supposed to. So like sometimes you get a nine drop, but the pin moves, and then it thinks you got a strike, and then it resets, and then you get screwed because now you don't get to shoot at your nine drop. So by doing what he did, right? I tried to get them to do that once when I used to bowl here, and they claimed they couldn't do it. All right, so Danny with an eight fill on the strike and a nine on the frame. Danny, who works at the uh, Millis Ryan Family Amusements location, apparently can walk into Ryan any Ryan's location and already know what to do more than the current employees that work at this location. Danny's on the head pit a lot in this first half, but this time not so rewarded with a 5-7-10. He does have a piece of wood that is touching the seven. So if he could, if he can make the 5-10 here, the ball should hit the wood and take out the 7. Oh, hell of a heck of a bid. I'm trying to keep my language down. He does take out the 5-7 and sets himself up for a potential 10 box here. I think he's definitely going to be happy with his first half on the road. And what is a very big match for himself. And he clips the 10 for a 58 in the first half. He is on a 116, what would that be? Uh, 16, 32, 48, uh, 60. He is on a 580 pace right out of the gate. Let's see if he can keep that going for the day. And here is your current number two seed in the C division, Michael Fabrizio Smith. This is, we are getting to the point in the year where bowlers are starting to face their division opponents again. And this is one of those examples, I believe. Yeah, it is. Mike's first ball. Off target, but oh, look at this. He gets everything but the one he was aiming for, leaving just the one pin. So I'm pretty sure if he hits the head pin on this one, he should get a spare. That's what I would try to do anyway. Jetstream got under on that one a little bit, but he does make the spare. Matches Danny's spare in the opening frame. Thank you, Bob. Even better commentary, if I might add. Mike's first fill ball right in the pocket, and he gets a much worse leave than he did when he missed the head pin, leaving the five, seven, eight, ten. He does have a piece of wood between the five and the eight, but I don't expect that to do too much, except maybe take out the seven if he hits it. Hits the five, rather. And he's gonna be right in the hole, so. Hoping to see what he can get here on the third ball. Caitlin Finn tuning in, and I'm pretty sure I know who she's rooting for, but I shouldn't be positive, so. Yeah, Danny thinks it might be the opponent, so. And Mike finding the uh, the four pin spot on his second and third ball. However, there was no four pin there, so he leaves him with a six box. He does take a 22 to 21 lead through two boxes. However, now he's up against Danny's strike. Off target again, blowing out the two, four, and the eight, the side saddle triangle. Hard to make when you're trying to, but easy to make on a first ball when you don't want to. Oh, off target to the right with the half Worcester right, leaving himself what I like to call a mess. He has the one, five, seven, six, ten, trying to get as much as he can here. And back in the hole for a five box. So as I was mentioning earlier, Mike is looking good. He's going to be in the playoffs. It's just a matter of the one, two, or three seed. 
But Danny is in a tight contested three-way battle right now for the eight spot, the final remaining spot in C Division with Dave Peterson and Wayne Bullock, who are probably very interested in the outcome of this match today. Mike back on target, however, can't get the seven pin to go. Also with the 6-10, does have some help. I can see things getting bouncing around here if he can get up on that diagonal wood. Oh, but he hits the straight piece where he didn't want to, leaving himself the same thing he started with, the 6 7 10. No. Well, Mike with a lot of dashes here, which is a term for a ball where you don't get anything on a ball. So that leaves him with 34 through four boxes. So with the exception of him throwing a double strike here, he will be trailing after half one of the match. If anybody can throw a double strike, though, it's Mike Fabrizio Smith, let me tell you. Oh, right on the head pin. He almost does it. Leaves a solid six with no wood to help. But I bowl in a Thursday night mixed league with this guy, and he can get the strikes coming in a hurry. So I'm sure we'll probably see some of that at some point today. And he is a little wide left. So he's going to be looking at a 43 or a 44 here, giving Danny a 14 or 15 point lead, or a pin lead going into the half two. And there it is. He finds his target for a 10 box. All right, so as I said, half one, we have Danny 58, Mike 44. Dan moves over to lane three for the first time in the match. Off target, leaves himself the cluster in the middle, the one, two, four, five, eight, nine. One that you don't expect to go very often, but every once in a while it does. You kind of want to hit this one full usually. He's a little light, taking out the one and the nine, leaving himself with the left side diamond, two, four, five, eight. Danny definitely winning so far in terms of hitting something on each ball. He's only missed on his third ball of the second frame to this point, hitting at least something. Gets an eight there for 66 after six. Ooh. On a Sunday, that's probably not everybody's favorite uh, combination, especially the, the uh, churchgoers in the audience here. Which isn't me, but anyway. Danny, light on the head pin, but not bad. Uh, leaves himself the three, six, ten. He does have the nine pin back there, which is tough to see on the camera sometimes. Thanks for that, Mike. Mike banged the table, which knocked my camera down. Danny a little uh, off target, leaving himself. He did take out the back pin, though, so now he's just looking at the, um, the three and the ten. And way off target on that one. I guess he wanted to see what that wood would do, or at least help the, the sweep, help preserve the sweep by clearing some of that out. He gets an eight box there, 74 through seven. Regardless of what he does, you know, um, obviously if he gets a couple really low frames, but uh, Fabrizio Smith will need a, at least a mark or two going up there and a half two. But Danny obviously wants to put as much pressure on him as he can. Tough break there, leaving himself the 2 4 6 with no wood, but at least he found his target. We call that a check mark in the game. Well, he at least gets one off target, but he does take out the four pin, so productive ball, even if not desirable. There he is, on his target, taking out the original object of the second ball for a nine box. 80, 83 through eight, sorry, a little hiccup there. As I said, Danny in a hot battle here for the last playoff spot in ACST South, C Division South. <laughs> Fabrizio Smith realizing that uh, he needs to be more gentle on the table because my tripod just isn't quite state of the art here. <laughs> I just wanted them to know it wasn't me. <laughs> no, it was definitely me. I, 
Danny with his second head pin split in a row, but this one, oh, I was gonna say it might have a chance, but it was gonna be tough, and he gave it a hell of a bid, but does leave the 10 pin. Should be able to bring in the 10 here, barring a, a very bad ball. Nope, he's right on it, 10 box, 93 through nine. Should be looking at at least 100 game here. You'd love to throw a mark on the end and see if you can get above that 110 mark. Uh, that's a nice looking ball, but not such a nice looking result. However, he does have some wood. He leaves himself to 410. He does have wood, not the most favorable, but probably a better chance than if he didn't have it. I don't know what I would do here. I'd prob oh, it kind of rolled up and flattened. I would probably go towards the object. Huh? Yeah, oh yeah, that's way in, yeah. I would probably go towards the object here and maybe the tip of the wood, but I think this one, he's gonna need a small miracle to make this one. He does go, yep, that's kind of what I was worried about. The wood rolls back, however, and in front. I don't know if it would have been hard enough to take it, but he did give that a great try. <laughs> Bobby, yeah, you might be right. All right, so Danny, not the half he wants, but he does finish with three head pins. Unfortunately, they are all splits. He brings in a 102 for the first game. And... Mike going up with his 44 half will need a 58 half to tie and a 59 half to win game one. Fabrizio Smith right out of the gate. Oh, wobbling four pin. I thought that was possibly going to be his. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. We just had a minor earthquake in South Yarmouth, Mass. Trying to see if I can. I don't know what's happening to my tripod here. I'm sorry. Mike does bring in the spare. What is happening to this? I know there's a dial to push somewhere, and then this will probably stop happening. Sorry, dial to turn rather. I'm a mess. I'm sorry. After I complimented myself for my great announcing skills, but my uh, my announcing's great. It's just the, the tripod, you know. What are you gonna do? Can't have everything, right? So Mike filling a spare here. A little off target, but he does get a good break. Get some good side-to-side -side action for a 7-fill, leaving himself the one three, six. The 3-pin did move a little bit off its spot. However, with the wood between the 3 and the 6, he does have a decent chance with an object here. Oh, he takes out the side. Almost had a piece of wood come back, but as we know, we don't really deserve those ones in those cases. Nice when they happen, but not, not always deserved. I'm still trying to finagle this uh, tripod here. I'm sorry. I know there's, like, I know I'm just, like, I'm sorry. Well, now we can give you a little scoreboard view. And you can see those red circles indicate a uh, bowler hitting the head. Oh, my God. The bowler hitting the, oh, I think I just figured it out, guys. Yes, I did. Oh, we are, now we are good to go tripod-wise. I was turning the dial the wrong way. So Mike on the target there, but for a head pin split. So when you see that red circle on the board, that indicates that you hit the head pin. Yeah, yeah, Kate, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you can put the Tylenol bottle away. We should be should be good to go here. Um, Mike going for a 10 box. <laughs> All right, guys, you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> People are already liking Kate's uh, message there. I finally figured out the tripod. Everybody's celebrating in the comments. <laughs> I finally stabilized a tripod and people are already celebrating in the comments. Sorry guys, I know, it's annoying. I've, I've been on the other end of this too. And... Anyway, uh, Fabrizio Smith with 80 after um, eight, needs a mark. If he gets a good frame, he does not need a huge fill, but he does need a mark, however. Leaves himself the four horsemen left with the 10 pin. With wood, some sprinkle in the back, so not impossible. Needs a head pin hit here. He does, but a little full. Leaving himself the four, seven, 10. Any pins he can get on this ball will cut down the fill that he would require if he was to mark in the 10th. And obviously, he does get one. 
And obviously, um, even if he does lose this game, he still wants to get as many pins towards total as he can. Because in ACST, not only do you get a bonus two points for total like you do in many leagues, you actually get a bonus four points. So in ACST, these bowlers are bowling for two points a string, each string. However, whoever wins the total pinfall gets a bonus four points for a total of 14 points to be decided today in this matchup. Fabrizio Smith with a chance at a spare. He's going to need a head pin. Either inside or outside would work. But he's going to want to be a little um, in the pocket on either side. Full might not do it here. Oh, he hits it light, but does not carry the six. So Danny Finn, who is in more need of the points in this matchup for playoff implications, does take the first two. 102 to 98. Award two points to the president. ACST president, for those of you who um, didn't know what I meant there. It's not just like a random nickname, I just assigned him. All right, so now Danny will start game two on lane four. And for those of you audibly impaired, game one was 102 to 98, awarding, oh, and I will write Mike's name, I'm sorry. Uh, two points for Danny Finn. But Mike does stay very close in the total pinfall count. So if anybody knows how to lose the first game, it's myself. I'm a B division bowler, and out of my 15 matches, I think I've lost the first game 13 of those times this year. So not always the end of the world. It's just how you come back. Danny, with a decent attempt, gets something to get over to the right side, but not enough. Andy checks in with a 10 to open up game two. Did I spell that right? What? Your name? Freeze. I didn't stick an extra yep. I in there? All right. For some reason, I felt like there was, I put an extra I in there. All right. Hey, if anybody knows what it's like to get their last name screwed up, it's me, so. <laughs> 11 letters long? Yeah, it's a mess. Mine's yeah, you got the hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Danny with a 7-10 split, but the nice part about Candlepin is sometimes you get some di some wood to shoot to help. I don't know if this wood will help, but if you get something to come flying off that wall, let's see. No. The ball did make its way over there, but did not take out the 10. So Danny with two head pin splits out of the gate. That's It's a good sign he's hitting the head pin, but... Um, not always the best sign to, uh, I think Danny just discovered the hills and valleys that the approaches in Yarmouth have. I know Micah Imperato is a big, uh, he likes to comment on that a lot, but that's the home field advantage when you bowl in Yarmouth, I guess. It's uh, pretty hilly up there. I mean, the whole Cape is a peninsula that is basically surrounded by beach, so probably not the most even ground all the way around and through. All right, so Danny Finn with 19 through two. is off the head pin, but probably his most makeable leave of the game, definitely his most makeable leave. Gets what they like to call the Millis eight from his own home house. Guess we might have to start calling it the Ryan's eight. And he's right on it, right between the one and the two, no doubt, spare. Is Chris Curley watching? I don't know, it's possible. We got 24 viewers though. Well, Chris, there's a long way to go. Uh, Mike can still take 12 points in this match, which I'm sure he'd be very happy with. Of course, Danny could then probably just kick him out of the league because he's got that kind of power. So I don't know which way Mike should go with this one. Danny filling six on the spare here. Somebody help me out. Help me yeah. <laughs> Give him at least one or two more, and then and then maybe, you know. Oh, uh, Mike Smith Fabrizio just pointing out that uh, when they played early in the season, uh, Mike won 10 to four in that early season matchup. So Danny definitely looking for some, for some redemption today. He didn't get kicked out. He didn't get kicked out, so. Uh, so nine box for Danny there, giving him 44 through four. Wow, so he had 66 through six last game. Now he's got 44 through four this game. I am detecting a theme, folks. I am definitely detecting a theme. Danny is 
doing pretty well on his head pins, but both bowlers seeing uh, more splits than they'd probably like to. Off target there, leaving himself the four horsemen with the eight pin on the back, I believe commonly known as the Kaleri. Except when I watched a match with Bob Kaleri, I did not see him leave that once. So I felt cheated and I, I don't get it. Danny chop, a little full chop it out the one and the eight. Yeah, I sat there and watched a whole 30 minute match. Nice 10 by Danny for a 54 first half. And I felt like that was uh, about however long time of my life that I can never get back. And he didn't even leave one quote unquote Kaleri. From what I've been told, it's not that he left them a lot, it was that he made them a lot, but still, I still felt cheated. Come on, you can't even like leave one? Like, what are we doing? So here's Fabrizio Smith to start game two on lane three here in South Yarmouth, Massachusetts. Off to the right, taking out the half Worcester right plus the six pin. A shot that you can, it's harder to make for a spare, but easy to take out on the first ball. Oh, he blows up the center, but nothing goes over into the 10 pin. That very well might have been a hammer ball if he threw that at the full set. And a little wide right for a nine box, giving him nine through one if you're unable to, to do that math. You're welcome. Hi. Mike in the... I know. Karen Urshatelli chiming in in the broadcast here, who was at my softball game this morning and uh, noticed how we almost lost in the end, but we did not. We are 1-0 on the new season. I know many of you are waiting for that update. Um, so Fabrizio Smith here on his third ball, hoping to see if he can get as much as possible. Looks good. A little full, but he gets a nine out of it. 18 through two, 19 to 18, Danny Finn two boxes. Good luck on your keynote tickets. I like how you spread them out throughout the uh, the sections. Uh, quick pick. Oh. Uh, all right, Fabrizio Smith with an odd one here, leaving the two and the nine and the ten. Piece of wood in front of the two, but he's gonna need a, a big stroke of luck here. Danny Finn chiming in in the comments as he's sitting down in the bowlers area. Gotta love that. See if, see the thumbs firing away over there. It looks like another comment might be coming any moment now. Mike's, Mike Fabrizio Smith with an eight box for a 26 through three. Still looking for his first mark of game two and his first lead of the match. He still has not led at any point in this match. Still early though. Mike Fabrizio Smith in his home house. Like I said, can really get the strikes flowing at any time here. As I witness on Thursday night in the mixed league quite often. Wide left there, taking out the four and the seven. Oh, well, and half was Sir right here. He's gonna want a big ball here to uh, see if he can at least get out of this with a seven box or above. See if he can find the middle of that middle cluster there. And it looks like he will, okay. Well, two on every ball that frame for a six box. And he is sitting at 32 through four. So again, barring a double strike, which Mike is capable of, Danny Finn will win his third straight half of the match. Actually, I believe he lost the second half of game one, but he did win the game, which is the part that counts. Fabrizio in the pocket, little light, leaving the diamond, the three, five, six, and nine. Wiggling three pin, but honestly, he might be better off that it stayed up. Oh, nice looking ball, but a little full does not carry the six pin. So Fabrizio Smith will be without a mark in half one here. And a little wide right for a nine, giving him a 41 and giving Danny a 13 pin lead going into um, half two, which I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's about the same that they, uh... I 
Danny Finn on the road, making sure that his the home bowler feels comfortable in his own setting as they turn the um, they turn the button off, which they usually don't do here, so to turn off the automatic reset. Danny right in the pocket out of the gate, leaving himself a ringing five pin. No wood that's gonna uh, help here. If he plays that piece off to the left, I'm sure it was an accident. Looks good, right on it. Danny right out of the gate with a spare to start half two. Keeping the pressure on the current number two seed in C Division South. Phil, wide right, does catch the three pin light, throws it over a little, but doesn't get much for a three fill, leaving himself the, let's see if I can do this here, the one, two, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a mouthful. Piece of wood off to the left, but I don't expect that to come into play at all. Danny's just gonna wanna find his object here and work his way out of this box the best way possible. As Jeff Surrett would say, anytime the head pin is up, it's a spare leave. However, this would be a tough one. Danny wide left, leaving himself the spread eagle pins in the middle, plus the 10 pin. By spread eagle pins, I mean when you get a spread eagle, those are the pins that you knock down, the one, five, eight, nine. And in the hole, four or five box. He's gonna wanna shake that one off quickly, giving him 72 through seven. Still plenty of room here, as they would say in the industry can easily still get himself above 110, 120 if he gets hot here down the stretch. Danny catches the head pin very light, leaving himself the three, seven, nine, ten with wood. I'm a little worried about that nine pin in the back, if anything's gonna touch it or not, but it could. Danny's gonna wanna be right on the three pin here and then kinda see what happens. And he's high on the wood. He takes out the corners, but leaves himself with the three and the nine. If he misses this ball to the right, he should take out the back pin with the wood that's there. But he misses to the left and still has the three nine. For an eight box, giving him 80 through eight here in game two of this Atlanta Candlepin singles tour C South division battle. Where as I pointed out earlier, Mike Fabrizio Smith will be one of the first three seeds in the C-South, but Danny Finn is fighting for that last playoff spot currently with Wayne Bullock and Dave Peterson. All three of them really tight, looking for that last playoff spot right now. Danny leaving himself the one, two, four, and six with a little wood to help in the back if he hits the head pin. Which, he looks good, he's right on it, drills the spare. Big spare going into the 10th box, assuming he can throw a good fill ball here. Adding a little more pressure to whatever Mike's gonna need going into half two. And I believe, back to my softball team that I know you all wanted to hear more about, I think that was the tying run at the plate. It was, I just got confirmation. I don't think so. I disagree. Danny, great ball for a nine fill. Has a piece of wood there. Really, he just wants to avoid the cap. Oh, right on it though. Avoids the, the cap of the wood that he needed to avoid. Giving him 99 through nine for the third time. He has double digits of the same frame. He has had 66 through six today. He has had 44 through four today, and he's had 99 through nine today. This is unbelievable, folks. Let's see if he can do this in like every frame. He's already got three out of them knocked, three of them knocked out. Right on the head pin to finish. Gets another nine. He's gonna have to leave that one there as the game is over, but he finishes with a beautiful 118. Coming off that five box where he wanted to turn that around, and he certainly did. So that's a 118, giving him a 220 through two games. Mike Fabrizio Smith goes up needing a 77 half to catch up in game two. 
And like I said earlier, even if he doesn't do that, he still wants to get as much as possible to, at the very least, keep total within reach for the, the final three games. Mike Fabrizio Smith with the Millis eight. Like I said, we might have to start calling the Ryan's eight after today. And wide left, leaving just the one he's been trying to hit all box. The sometimes highly elusive head pin. Mike with a 10, giving him 51 through six. Still looking to hit his stride here in this match. But Danny, big stuff. I'm sure Dave Peterson and uh, Wayne Bullock are uh, hoping for Mike Smith to get a little hotter here as uh, Danny's winning some big points here out of the gate on the road. Mike right in on the head pin, however, leaves the seven, eight, 10 with some wood. So it's not impossible, but He's gonna have to hit that front piece and really hope for a nice uh, side action off that left side wall there. I'd say the probability of making this is about 14%. Candlepin bowling stats. Oh, he hits the eight pin, but really needed to catch that wood somewhere, preferably that front piece. Oh, there he is, there it is. The ball did get over there, but did not take the 10. Who knows if the eight pin was still there, if it would have possibly would have been a different result, but we'll never know because that didn't happen. So that gives, hey Mike, you see that? Okay. All right, so a little score error there, but Fabrizio Smith, who also was employed by this location for Ryan. We, actually, I just realized we have two Ryan Family Amusements employees also squaring off today. One out of Millis and one out of Yarmouth. Again, the Millis one knew how to work the computer more than the Yarmouth ones did, so that's cool. <laughs> At the desk, Danny was able to turn off the reset, which they used to tell me was not possible. Mike buried the head pin, but only leaves the six and the seven. What's that? You know what I hate, though, is they told me they couldn't do it before. Oh, okay. Oh, Michael Fabrizio. Oh, let's keep your elbows off the table if you do that, okay, if you plan. Right. Um, sorry for the earthquake there. Um, but Mike Fabrizio Smith made a uh, beautiful 6-7, uh, no wood, which that might be the spark to get him going here. Oh, all right. So apparently I'm being a little too hard on the Yarmouth employees, and apparently... That was a very difficult thing that not many people knew how to do, but um, they figured it out, so I apologize. Mike off head pin does get a seven fill. <laughs> Every time I say his name, he thinks I'm talking to him. But to my defense, he was the one who wanted me to call this match, so. <laughs> he misses wide right there. And he does clean it up for a 10 box, giving him 87 through nine. So he is going to lose this game because even a triple strike would only give him 117. So Danny Finn does secure the two points for game two, giving him a four point to zero lead. And now it's just a matter of what his total lead will be going into game three. Mike, a little wide left. Gets a spinner in there, leaving the one, three, seven, eight piece of wood on the three. I don't think it's covering the head pin. It's close, but I don't think it is. So he's likely gonna wanna hit the head pin outside here and hope. He does hit the head pin, little full. Piece of wood kinda screwed it up. That's why I was saying he wanted to hit it light. Leaving himself the three and the eight and see if he can get at least one. He does for a 96 game two. Meaning game two, again, goes to Danny Finn, 118 to 96, giving Michael Fabrizio Smith a 194 through two games. And for those audibly impaired, here it is. Mike Nardone showing his bias in the comments. Also another Millis bowler, so I'm not surprised. They probably share a league together somewhere. And Danny Finn's game three starts now. Oh, Danny off target, but 
does get some tremendous roll action, leaving himself the one and the ten with a piece of wood. I'll stop saying your name as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm learning though. So Danny could get this even wide right. Okay, so he, he was too middle on the wood. That was one of those shots where if he was on the other side of the white, the red line, he could have snapped the head pin forward and got the 10 that way also. But I think he was going for the head pin, which he did not succeed, giving himself an eight in box one. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was really nice. Perfect. Yeah, those are the ones you see like maybe once a year, you know? Danny back on the front one, leaving himself the, not a lot of luck though, leaving himself the half Worcester right plus the 10 pin. There's a piece of wood off to the right, but he's gonna have to throw something off that right wall to get that nine pin in the back, either the ball or the three pin. He almost does, but like I said, nothing wanted to find the nine pin there. Mike Nardone with some very good advice in the, um, in the comments for Danny. And a nine box, giving Danny 17 through two. Yeah, Micah, unfortunately with only eight candle pin lanes, that's usually the case here. Oh, uh, four, three. And then it, okay, there you go. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, now that this place is becoming the entertainment center of the Mid Cape with a newly opened air park and a decent video arcade and a bar and birthdays and Everything. It's it's usually pretty busy here. That's one of the reasons I myself moved out of this place for my own ACST action. It does get difficult at times. And Micah, I don't know if you were watching, but Danny already found one of the peaks and valleys that you like to talk about from this place. And the approach. Danny, a little light on the head pin. Oh, he probably wanted that three pin to stay up, but it does tip over, leaving him with the reverse triangle five, six, nine. The wood does stick around. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I see what you did there, Micah. So Danny might want to see if he can throw off that wood there. He, I think that's what he was trying to do, but he just missed the wood. Takes out the six and the uh, nine, leaving himself with just the kingpin. which he still leaves up there, giving himself a nine and a 26 through three frames. <laughs> like I told you guys earlier, Micah does love to talk about the approaches here, and he's proving me right in the comments as we speak. <laughs> yeah, Micah, if you weren't watching, if you go back, I kind of pointed this out about you, so it's kind of fun. Thank you for validating me. Hey, home field advantage, that's what I say. But yeah, I guess it is kind of an injury concern for some too. I think Micah left here with a sore ankle when he had to play me here earlier this year. For those of you who are wondering who me is, that's Peter Ricciatelli, arguably the best announcer um, to the east of the Bourne Bridge in Sagamore. Danny and, and Mike Fabrizio Smith threw in big bucks to get me to come call this match today, so. I do still have some availability on my schedule, so if you want me, my rates start in the uh, three-figure range, but depending on travel, it can get a little pricey, so maybe just collaborate with your fans and your friends and family and see if you can make it happen. Danny on the head pin, frame five. Oh, but will the six go? Yes, it does. All right, so now he can call this a spare leave. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I got a troll in the comments here, apparently. So Danny leaving himself with the four and the seven. Um, piece of wood, so he could even hit the seven pin here and maybe still snap it. I don't. I wouldn't try to do that, but it, there is always that possibility. We're gonna find out, and he does. He's off target, but because of the way the wood settled up against there, he does, making me look good again. He does um, make the spare. So that's gonna be fine by a couple minutes. All right, so Danny sits down with a 44 plus his next ball, which will fill that spare he just made. And Mike Fabrizio Smith goes up onto lane three, where he starts off. 
with a 1-5-6-10 with help. So a head pin shot here could very likely take this one. I would not be surprised. Yeah, Mike, I think I might have uh, aided the bowler a little bit there. Oh, Fabrizio misses, but still carries it. The six pin tried to fight, but did not have enough fight left in it. And does tip forward. Uh, Mike Fabrizio Smith opens up with a spare. <laughs> yeah, Kaylin, you, you might be right, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Host is um, very a very loose term there with them. I could get into that, but I'll I won't. Seven fill for Mike there, leaving himself the uh, the one three ten. That's actually why I had to move on from here because the the hosting ability of this house isn't quite up to par, but. Um, Mike Fabrizio Smith as an employee here is able to kind of dictate that a little more on his own so but yes point taken 26 through 2 for Mike Fabrizio Smith very full on the head pin there, leaving the spread eagle minus the seven pin, but for the seven pin he does not have, he does have the nine pin in the back. Oh, actually she might have been talking to Micah there too. I don't know. Who are you talking to, Kate? Was that against me or Micah? I'm kind of curious now. Or both. All the above. Fabrizio Smith does clean up that box pretty good. Giving him an eight in that frame and a 34 through three. So he ties Danny Finn, but Danny Finn needed four frames to get 34. So Mike is essentially up a frame at this point. However, Danny does have a spare in the fifth. So he will make up that ground a little bit if Mike is unable to mark. However, that is a hammer. Well, almost a nine pin hammer. The nine pin tried to fight a little, but it does go and I am not surprised. That was, that was a lot of action on that ball. Looked like a hammer as soon as it was going in. Big candle pin chat contributor, Bobby Beer, chiming in, rooting for his league mate. Oh, is this a double? Yes, it is! Mike Smith, who I, who I teased earlier, can easily find a double at any time, finds one there. He sits down with a double strike, so he is going to have at least 54 in the fifth, at least 64, no, sorry, at least 54 in the fourth, at least 64 in the fifth, and then um, 20 plus the first ball, 10 plus the second ball, first two balls rather, you know what I'm trying to say. If you don't, I apologize, I kind of butchered that one. So anyway, uh, Mike Fabrizio Smith storming back in this one. Putting a lot of pressure on Danny all of a sudden, who is filling a mark right now, which he does with six, leaving the one, two, five, and six. I'm going to slide the camera slightly here to uh, get a better view of Danny's action. Danny, wide right, leaving himself the half Worcester middle. That would be the one and the five. If I might have just coined that term, I'm not sure. Please credit me with that if I did. And wide left for an eight box. So Danny sitting at 58 through six. Now all of a sudden with two balls, Mike Fabrizio Smith has possibly turned the tables very quickly in this matchup. He was down 26 pins coming into this game, but he is at the moment looking very good to win game three and make up most if not all of those 26. Danny leaving the four horsemen plus the eight. Oh, what a beautiful shot by Danny. Right in the one-two pocket where you want to be on that shot. Takes it out, right, just like the textbook tells you to. 
So big spare by Danny there to help stabilize the damage of this pending double strike that is, like I said, pending. And just staring right down at Danny. Here comes the fill. A little off target, but he does get a nice break, leaving the 137 for a 7 fill. Wide right, leaving himself the one, not seven here. This is interesting because some might just try, go for the one with the wood to secure one pin. I know myself personally, I would go for the head pin and go for the 10 box, but Danny might decide that the guaranteed safer pin is, you know, something he wants to do here. If he at least misses to the left, he should carry the back, which he does. So he was probably going for the head pin there, but smartly made sure to miss to the left if he was gonna miss. So that gives them 84 through eight, going into the final two frames. Again, Rizio Smith is looking very good to win game three, unless Danny can finish with a couple uh, marks here. A little light on the head, not light, that was a good pocket ball. Leaves uh, the four pin for a nine drop with help. He should be okay on this one, as long as he's in the area code. And he's right on it. I mean, not right on it, but right on it where he was definitely gonna make the spare. I saw that. I see him on here, too. All right, so Danny does get a big mark in the ninth there, just like last game. Two games in a row where he's marked in the ninth. Let's see if he can have a strong finish just as he did last time, finishing for a 118 when things weren't looking as good a couple of frames before. He leaves the half, the uh, half Worcester, the four horsemen right, one, three, six, 10 for a six fill and an even 100 through nine. All right, a little light on the head pin there. A little more of it. He could have made that on the outside, but not quite enough. Leaving himself the, uh, you know, whatever he had before, minus the one pin, the, the uh, 3 six, 10, which he takes out two of and gives himself a 109. So very solid bowling for the first three games for Danny Finn. That's a 109 and a 329 three games. Mike Fabrizio Smith filling this highly anticipated double strike that we witnessed just a few minutes ago. He made the spare, and now we are in the very next frame, which is the seventh, where he got a seven. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, well, we lost, yeah. So I think we're back here. Uh, Mike Fabrizio Smith with, with 107 through seven. He is gonna win the third game on this next ball, even though he has three frames to go. Um, he filled the double strike very well with a six to give himself a 26 in the fourth frame, a spare to give himself a 20 in the fifth frame for an 80 first half, a 17 in the sixth to give him 97, a 10 in the seventh, and here he is in the eighth box. He has already won the third game. Some very excitable fans over on lane one and two. And he, like I said, he has won game three. And now it's just a matter of if he's gonna make up all 26 pins, which he's right on pace to do. If he gets another mark, he likely will make up the 26 pin deficit he was facing coming into this game. He is at 116 through eight. So this match is gonna be four points to two in favor of Danny Finn going into game four. It's just a matter of the total going into game four. Mike Smith leaving the cluster. In the middle, the, uh, the one, two, four, five, eight, nine. Bobby Beer inspired to get here for the remainder of this match. If anybody's close to Yarmouth, it might be worth your while at this point, because it looks like this is gonna be a hot finish. Nine box there, Mike Fabrizio Smith already with a 125 in the ninth box, showing why he is one of the top seeds in the C Division South right now. 
He is also the defending C Division South champion of last year, losing a heartbreaking final by one pin to the North winner, Danny. Who beat him? Was it Jeff Little last year? To Jeffrey Little by one pin. So Mike, all summer with that on his mind, is storming back to another division win and a playoff spot, hoping to avenge that loss. He is the defending C South champion, but he wants the whole thing this year. Nine drop here, tough wood, piece of wood in the back, which might help, but it does not. So he is gonna have either a 134 or 135. And we might have a tie game here through um, however many games that was. Yes, we do. Six, if my math is correct, it, this match is 329 to 329 through three games. So Danny is leading four points to two. However, this is anybody's ball game, folks, going into the last two strings. For those of you audibly impaired, you do not know that I just said that. But here's the scores on paper. Danny Finn getting up on lane four. For those of you who like to flash the scores and not give anybody a chance to look, see, this is how it's done right here. That's not a shot at you, it's just a learning moment. Danny Finn, game four, here we go. Hits the object head pin there, but leaves a mess, leaving the two, four, seven, eight, and 10. And only takes out the seven, which I'm sure he was not trying to do there, but if he was, it was a very unique strategy. One that I do not think would have worked ever. Danny does clean it up though. He gets himself an eight out of that. Not terrible for the first box. So again, we have a tie ball game through three games, 329 each. Danny leading the match uh, points-wise, four to two, as he has won the first two strings and lost the third. And like I said, the real uh, points come into the winner of total pinfall. So you can only win two strings, but if you win those two by enough to win total, you actually win the match in ACST eight to six. So that is very much a possibility in today's match. Danny on the diamond. Oh, it didn't look like it was going to go, but the four pin does find a way to carry for a spare. Looks like our Wi-Fi issues have hopefully, hopefully resolved. So we actually didn't see your double fill because the Wi-Fi crapped out, but I updated them once we got back. Yeah. It crapped out right as you were about to start filling the double, of course. I was getting everybody all excited and then gone. All right, so Danny with a six fill, leaving himself the one, seven, eight, nine. With wood to help, if he hits the head pin here, there's a good chance this one could go. It's looking good. He hits the head pin. Oh, but the nine pin is elusive this time. Nothing found it. Oh, but when you hit it directly with a ball, it can't it can't not fall over that time. So Danny brings it in for a 10 box. Giving him 34 through three. I'm pretty sure most of you can see that now, but for those of you visually impaired, I'll keep giving those updates once in a while. Danny on the head pin. Leaving the 2-4, hoping to get the 6, but he does not. However, there is a piece of wood there. Not super helpful, but if he's able to make his object, which is the 2-pin here, something could get over and hit either the 6-pin or the wood. So, not the most unmakeable shot in the world, but you need a good ball here. Oh! He, oh! I thought he was going to make it, folks, but he throws the 2-pin right behind the 6. I thought he had that one. Just a little too heavy. Not even heavy, just not quite light enough where you want to be there. He apparently didn't like the insurance policy he had to the left and checks in with a nine box for a 43 through four. Oh, see if he, you know why he didn't make that 10? Cause he didn't want me to go crazy about another 44 through four. I see what happened there. Yeah, that's, he did that just to, to keep me from my, uh, my glory there. 
I see. I'll, I'll keep that one. I'll, re I'll remember that one. Oh, uh, Gino on lane one pointing out that he has 24 through three boxes. So Danny goes wide left um, on that one, leaving himself still with the four horsemen plus the nine pin. Throws the safe ball there, which is smart, and takes out everything but the, the head pin. And on a box like that, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to forget about the quote-unquote object and just go for the count at that point. Danny did that beautifully, checking in for a nine box and a 52 first half. So Mike Fabrizio Smith coming off his monster 135 game. Let's see how he follows that up. I'm going to move the camera slightly here, so bear with me. Oh, and a half Worcester left right out of the gate. Not unmakeable, but most candlepin bowlers never care to see this very often. And he finds the hole again, just reiterating that it's a half Worcester left. Apparently he wanted to leave no doubt. So here he really wants to go for the count, which he does, wide right, and he gets a five box. So not bad. I uh, once started a game with a four frame and finished with a 160 something. So if you're ever gonna come out with a bad frame, it's the first box is never a bad time to do it as you have nine boxes to recover. Mike little wide right but gets a much better break off the head pin this time leaving the one two and ten which he almost gets the ten but in Millis I guess that's why they would have called it the Millis eight but in Yarmouth that's the uh, Yarmouth seven takes out the two pin probably wants to throw a nice safe one here because with that wood you should be able to at least get a nine even if he misses the object and no, he, oh, he hits the object, but the wood does not take out the 10, giving him a nine box and a 14 through two. So Danny Finn right back on the horse with a 10 pin lead for two frames. However, Mike is going up against a few open boxes now. So it's a chance for him to, to climb back in this game in the first half. Looks like somebody from the front desk just got a DoorDash delivery. DoorDash delivery. Wonder what they got. Looks like it's in a white bag. Could be any number of local locations, I imagine. Mike Fabrizio Smith with the 136 on the outside, but he gets the head pin to come off the wall and take out the six. <laughs> uh, spare, I, you know, if you're an employee and you're working, I can see you being a little different, but. Um, anyway, um, Mike Smith with a spare there, Phil Ball, full on the head pin, but does get a good break. Oh, it even turns into a nine drop. That ball looked like it was, hey, Mike, you got to fix your fill. Um, looked like it was destined to be a, a split there, especially without fully hit it, but he does get the home bounce on this occasion and um, gets a nine fill. All right, Brian, so um, just to update the match score, since you must be tuning in late here, it is 329 for Danny Finn and 329 for Mike Fabrizio Smith. And Danny Finn has won the first two games, two games, I mean, um, so he's up four points to two. However, a total is anybody's ball game currently as they are tied. Bobby Beer goes from chiming into the comments to showing up in person. Unbelievable. That's the ACST fan dedication I like to see down here in Yarmouth, Mass. So Mike, unfortunately, unable to take advantage of the nine drop. Um, gives himself a nine box and a 42 half. So he's a 10 box away from tying Danny Finn, which would mean that they would still be tied after the 329 to 329. If Mike gets a 10 box here, the tie would remain with both bowlers having 15 frames to go. We got a, uh, got a hot one brewing up here. Mike, outside, will he get it? No, the 10 pin stands alone. 
But he does have a piece of wood, so my self-fulfilling prophecy might come true here. And it does not. So Danny Finn wins half one, 52 to 51, giving him a one pin lead currently in the match. I'm telling you folks, this one might very well come down to the last ball today. Stay tuned and tell all your friends to tune in as well because this one could get crazy. So Danny Finn going up on lane three with a one pin lead in the string and a two point lead in the match and a one pin lead in the match as well. Paul chiming in for the comments for those visually and for those audibly impaired. So hopefully Brian definitely knows now what the uh, status is as we've both said it and typed it. Danny gets around the cap of the wood, which I thought might screw him if he found, but he takes out the spare. Beautiful shot. So 62 through six plus this next ball. Whoever wins this half, folks, is not only gonna win the string, but is also gonna have the lead for total going into um, the last string. Danny right in the pocket. Oh, but does leave himself a split. The uh, good old 6-7, which Mike Fabrizio Smith actually made earlier with no wood. Danny does have wood, but I don't know if the angles are gonna, they, they could go, but it could also be an unfavorable angle on that front piece. Oh, but he plays the curtain and it does not go. So probably what he was trying to do and it does. I was right where the angle wasn't there to initially take the six. However, he does get the Yarmouth bounce off the left wall and takes out the 10 box. I'm sure he's disappointed with that one, but he still checks two more pins. And in a match like this, those could be the two that win or lose this match, so. Danny right back on the head pin. Oh, leaves an ugly, ugly four, five, eight, nine. However, he does have a piece of wood covering the five and the nine that might very well sweep right across. I don't know if it'll carry the four, but it, it could. I guess there's only one way to find out here. Oh, a little high. I think he wanted to find the red line on that. He kind of hit it more towards the cap, taking out the two that it was covering only, leaving himself the, the uh, four and the eight. Bob Lee currently enjoying his dinner and able to see the score at the same time. Glad we can accommodate. I hope dinner is just as um, fulfilling. Fun fact, I helped Bob Lee save his career as uh, he had a lot to do with the MCAS test. And I was in the first class of 2003 that was required to pass that thing to graduate. So if it wasn't for fine people like me showing off her academic skills, the MCAS might have died one year off the ground. But Bob, you're welcome. So Danny right back on the head pin, leaving a 6-10, no wood. He does not find the six pin there. And he does find it on the third ball. So the second time this half, he does throw the, the ball on the third ball that he was hoping for on the second ball and both times does convert the 10. But like I said, folks, missing spares isn't always the end of the world. If you make those tens, I made up a term myself years ago that says tens win titles, and those four extra pins that Danny made on those tens could end up being the difference in this highly contested match. So Danny gets right back on it and leaves himself the uh, two four here, which is basically a nine drop with the wood. So as long as he gets the two, this is, should be like a 99.8% chance of going. And he's right on it. Oh, the point two chance. I did not know what I was talking about there, folks. Wow, sorry about that. I thought that one was in the bag, but the wood found a way to, I think the double wood in there is what kind of made it get weird. Danny absolutely deserved that spare, but Candlepin giveth and Candlepin sometimes takes away. So Danny does convert another 10 for a 108 game. 
giving him a 437 through four games. So Fabrizio Smith goes up to lane four, needing a 57 half to tie, a 58 half to win, and also a 57 half to keep the match tied as they were tied coming into this set. 329 apiece. Fabrizio Smith on the head pin, but leaves a gross 7, 9, 10 with a straight piece of wood on the 10. But honestly, if he could almost throw this ball in the gutter and clip the 10 pin, that thing could sweep all the way across. He finds the cap and does take out the, the 9, 10, but sets himself up with a piece to, for an easier shot at a 10 here. I do think there was a shot there, but he would have really had to drill the uh, 10 pin right in the face, as they say in the industry. Somehow the ball stays in play after hitting the wood and hits the seven from behind, giving Mike a 61 through six here. Fabrizio Smith will need it. Hey, Mike, pin in the gutter. Uh, Fabrizio Smith will need at least one mark in this half to win the game and very potentially two marks, depending on what he was to do with the fill ball of the one mark. So a little uh, lane maintenance there as Fabrizio Smith had a pin that didn't clear all the way. Here he comes for frame seven. Off target, leaving himself the four horsemen left along with the eight pin and the 10 pin in the back. A strange piece of wood kind of tucked between the two and the four. Could come into play, you know. Hits the head pin light and only the head pin as he throws it up and around the rest and the ball also did not take out the 10. Because you're here. I've tried a few times. I've tried a few times and he just gives me weird answers. So. Um, so Mike with a five box there giving him a 66 through seven. So now he will definitely need two marks to win the game as he's chasing 42 through um, with three boxes to go. Oh, right on the head pin there, leaving himself the four, six, and the seven. Um, piece of wood up to the right. He hit that piece of wood up to the right. He could get something to come back off the wall. He does, and it does, but oh, not enough to take the four pin. I think he needed to be a little more red line on that wood to really convert it, but he gave it a great chance. He, I mean, he got it to hit the last pin and move it a tad, but he trips it out for the 10 box. So if he is going to win this game, he will either need Two marks in the ninth and 10th or another double strike. But as we've already seen in this match, he is more than capable of. I was hoping the last time I tagged you and Doug, like one of you was gonna like go in and be like, you know, yeah, so what about it? But ne neither of you did. Sorry, I'm having a little side conversation here off camera. So Mike Smith chasing 32 pins for the final two frames. Hits the head pin. Does leave the 247, but he does, if you can't see, he does have the 8 pin in the back. So this is can be a very difficult spare, even with a really good ball. He throws a really good ball, and like I said, unfortunately there, you need a little help in the back. For a 9 box and an 85, but he's incredibly approachable. Well, I mean, like, when it's over. So, yes, uh, like Bobby Beer pointed out there, Mike does need a double strike at this point. So if this ball is not a strike, this game is over. He hits the head pit and does not get a strike. So Danny Finn takes game four, giving him a three strings to one lead. 
and uh, Mike would want to make this to chip into total, which he does not. So he is going to be in the mid 90s here, depending this last ball. He gives himself a 94, which is going to be a grand total of 425. So Danny Finn wins game four. He takes a 12-pin lead in the match, 437 to 425. For those of you audibly impaired, here it is on camera. Again, Danny is up three games to one. So, which means he's up six points to two, and he does have a 12-pin lead going into game five, which starts now. Danny on the head pin. Oh. Leaving the five, four, seven. Most people's, a lot of people's, um, a lot of people really hate this one. The wood's not as helpful as it looks on this one. And yep, as we can see, nothing really gets over to the five. Every once in a while, when you think it's never gonna go, it, it'll go just to show you that it does go, but it's it's very rare. Uh oh. It looks like we have an adding error. It's Bob Lee is correct. Thank you very much for that, Bob. I added wrong. So just to update that, Fabrizio Smith with 423, giving Danny Finn a 14-pin lead, which makes sense because he won the game by 14 in a match that was tied. So apparently I may have cheated on the MCAS, it turns out. So, Bob, I guess you guys didn't anticipate uh, cheaters on that thing, because looks like I got away. So, Danny off the head pin, but leaves the head pin. And tries the wood off to the side, see if he, if he could get a bounce, but he does not. So now he's just it's just him and the head pin, which he misses again. But with all those chances added, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back and smashes it on this ball. Uh, Gino telling his family that that's how you bowl on lane one. Danny, what did I say? I said he was going to find that thing with a smash, and not only does he, that is a hammer. Yeah, Peter, you missed that um, that part of the story earlier. Bob Lee worked at, at the MCAS test, and I was the first class that was required to graduate to um, to that had to pass to graduate, so I'd like to joke that I helped save Bob's career. So Danny leaving the 189 on his first fill of the strike ball there. Oh, the, the cap does get in the way, which I was a little worried about for him there. He does take out the 9 pin for an 8 fill and a 37 through 3. So, Peter, if you want the full story, please go back and rewatch this broadcast later, and you'll hear some uh, very entertaining quips from myself. Again, hottest uh, new announcer east of the Sagamore Bridge, Peter Ricciatelli. A little light on the head pin. Uh, ball was kind of running away from it. He does get the five pin, which helps, leaving himself the right side triangle, six, nine, ten. I don't think that piece of wood would cover the six. It might, but I don't. I think I'm sure Danny's gonna go for the six pin directly here. Oh, Chris Curley and I graduating high school. Oh, again, Danny proves me wrong. The wood does cover the the six pin. I thought it was gonna be just behind it. But Danny sits down with 56 plus his next ball once he gets back up there. Great, great spare to sit on right there in this very close match. And as we know, Fabrizio Smith can get hot in a hurry. And here, speaking of Mike Fabrizio Smith, here he comes up on lane three to start game five. Off target, leaving himself the one, three, and the eight with no helpful wood. Oh 
little bit of um, a little bit of uh, I don't know how to describe it. A lot of activity on lane two. Let's just say that. But for anybody who's bold ACST in Yarmouth, they're used to it. They uh, they know that's part of the the deal here. Especially as we get closer and closer to summertime. If anybody wants to see a real doozy, they should go back and watch my match versus Mike Erickson from years ago, I think 2018, and see what Mike had to endure for a little while the uh, morning after Thanksgiving. And not only that, he ended up throwing two of the most clutch boxes I've ever seen with an absolute circus going on around him and in front of him. And yeah, it was, it was pretty heroic. Mike Erickson, special shout out. So, um, Mike with a nine to start game, uh, game five here. Again, Danny Finn carrying a 14 pin lead into game five, already up three strings to one. Fabrizio Smith, possibly with a strike here if that would push is hard enough, no. But he does at least clear the split and he does have a little bit wider range to make the seven pin here. He's gotta be a little careful not to let that ball dip into the gutter. But uh, he should be okay as long as he just hits the wood. And he will. So big spare by Mike Fabrizio Smith as Danny Finn's already sitting on a nice first half here. Nathan's third ball on two off the bumper. Let's see if it comes back off that right bumper. It does. It's looking good. It is looking good. Oh, but then it hooks a little back to the right and Nathan gets a five. But he does take the lead on Audrian, five to four. Mike Smith filling the spare. On the head pin, a little full. Will he get an extra one? No, but that was a very full ball. So I think he's fortunate to um, get an eight fill there, leaving himself the two six. He's gonna wanna bury the two here and just kinda hope for the best. He does hit the two lightly, but isn't able to get anything into the six. Gonna try to pluck the six pin here for a 10 box, which could be valuable as I've touched on. In these type of matches, it's not just about the strike, strikes and spares, folks. It is just as much about the 10 boxes sometimes. You see those bowlers who sometimes like to throw away the third ball and then lose a game by three or four. Well, that's where they lost it, on those third balls. Yeah, Peter, we're kind of uh, discussing that here too, and apparently not. <laughs> Another reason why I no longer, I had to move myself and no longer call Yarmouth my home house. But it is what it is. Only eight candle pin lanes here, so, you know, can get tricky sometimes, especially as we get closer to summer here on good old Cape Cod. So Mike Smith with a nice head pin, but a little full for another split. And uh, now it looks at the 2-6 for a potential 9 or 10 box. And he does take out the 2 for a 9. So 45 through 4, he is down 1 in the game. Down 15 in the match through 44 completed frames. However, he is looking at a Danny Finn spare. Adrian got a little bit more mustard behind that one, but finds both bumpers and all. No, she takes out the 10 pin. All right, Fabrizio Smith with the four horsemen right, plus the eight pin. Chance here. I mean, he's gonna want to bury the head pin on either side, uh, the one, two side or outside, but the piece of wood that's kind of between the uh, two and the six here could come into play a little bit and help him out a little. Yeah, Peter, I mean, yeah, Paul, we're pretty used to it here. It's If you watch a lot of my ACST matches, oh, Mike Smith with a beautiful spare right on time. So he trails by one, uh, 56 to 55, and both bowlers have a fill ball coming up. Um, but yeah, Paul, those of us who have bowled ACST regularly here, it kind of comes with the territory, so we've gotten pretty used to it. Um, honestly, this isn't even that bad compared to how it gets sometimes. And the, the parent off to the uh, off camera there is kind of trying to keep some sense of order. So we at least appreciate the effort there because sometimes we don't even get that. Danny Finn with a off head pin five fill, giving him a 61 first half. 
Very decent total. <laughs> I think he's talking to the other Peter though, that's commenting. Uh, Danny, third ball, does take out three out of the four remaining to give him a 70 through uh, six here. So Danny already carrying a 14 pin lead here. As long as he wins total, holds on to total rather, he will win the match. Uh, but there's multiple point factors still at play here depending how this final half goes for both bowlers. Danny resetting. Very, very wise decision there. A little off to the left, but he does leave himself the one, three, five, six. I mean, sorry, the one, three, uh, six, nine. Very makeable, but you, you want to execute a good ball, usually between the one, three pocket. Uh, sometimes an outside play could make it, but you really want to put this one in between the one, three, which he does, and it goes. Beautiful spare by Danny Finn. I'm telling you, folks, we are in for a grand finale here. Wow, that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Thank you for that, Bobby. <laughs> I wonder if that's the first time he's heard it. I'm guessing not, but it might be. It very well might be. Kate, you might have to chime in and let us know if that's a original or not. Phil Ball. Oh, the vaunted half Worcester left. So that gives him a, he does get two extra pins there though, giving him a um, 82 through seven. As Rich Lamone would say, you gotta make the fill count here, which would mean at least get a nine box or above. So you get over 20 between the two frames total. But Danny reiterates the half lister left and needs a big ball here to get out. And he does throw it to the safe side, getting four more for a six box. So he does essentially turn his spare seventh box and the eighth box combined into a couple of nines but that's all right he's got 88 through eight. Oh, and there we are again 88 through eight danny finn always seeming to find a way to get the double numbers in the same frame i believe that's at least the fourth time today oh and if he i guess he like wanted to feel more balanced so he follows up his half worcester left with a half worcester right but let's see if he can battle out better this time with more than a six box I have a feeling this is going to be a solid ball right here. And it is, but a little full, leaving himself with the wings. Almost 4, 7, 6, 10. Really close to Finn Nagel. Right <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, but he was very close to finagling that one. <laughs> I like him, though. Oh, Danny going to the non-wood side, taking out the six-pin only. Uh, giving himself a seven. So a little bit of a rough stretch here down the stretch, but he still does have one frame to go. So 95 through nine, he should be in the hundreds. He would love a mark here to get himself into the one tens. Oh, right in the pocket, blocking the camera view on his uh, body language movement there, leaving himself the two and the four with a piece of wood that will not be helpful here. So he's really just gonna wanna hit the two and hope to not hit it uh, too heavy. And here we go. It looks good. Hey, he drills it. So big spare by, um... oh boy. Um... Big spare by Danny in the 10th there. So a five fill will give him at least a 110. An eight fill will give him a 550 series. So I'm sure that's a number he'd like to drive back to Franklin Mass with. He hits the head pin light, get, and there it is. He does get eight, make it nine. Danny Finn finishing with a big 114 for a 551 series. Very solid bowling by Mr. Finn. So now, to recap it all, Mike Fabrizio Smith is chasing, he need, well, he's on a fill ball here, so let's see what happens, and then I'll, uh, I'll fill you in here. 
So Fabrizio Smith on the fill, misses the head pin, but gets a great break, leaving everything but the head pin. That's a 64 first half, meaning he won the first half by three. However, he is now going to need a 50 half just to tie the string. And he is going to need a 65 half to win this match. So he does miss the, the very makeable spare opportunity there. So that's one I'm sure he would really have liked to have. And he does bring it in for the 10 at least. So that is a 10 box. Again, Mike Fabrizio Smith uh, should be the one, two, or three seed this year. However, Danny Finn, who needed the points much more, who's fighting for that last playoff spot with Wayne Bullock and, um, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, he called my match. Uh, sorry, oh man. Danny, who is it? It's um, Wayne, and who else that's your all tied? Yeah, Dave Peterson, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Dave Peterson was the name I was thinking of. Danny Finn uh, needing these points says him and Wayne Bullock and uh, Dave Peterson are all hotly contested, all going for those final that final playoff spot in C-South. So Mike Smith can afford this loss today that it looks like he's about to endure, but not over yet. Uh, but Danny Finn going on the road. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, and I even said it earlier, and then I just kind of blanked on it. I don't know what happened there, but... Um, anyway, so 84 through 7, and 30 more pins to tie the game. So again, if Fabrizio Smith can win this game, but by less than 14, he will win the game and lose the match 10-4, but there's always a chance he could throw a few huge marks here and, and steal the match right away from Danny. He's gonna need this one, and he brings it in. Big spare by Mike Fabrizio Smith, right on time, as they say in the industry. So with a good fill ball here, he's looking good for the game. However, he will need at least one more mark to, uh, he needs a 128 to tie the overall match and a 129 to win it. So he will need another mark. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I was just senior moment there, and it's been a long week. I am almost 40 after all, so. Everybody tries to say that's not middle-aged, but the average American does only live till their mid to late 70s, so that's middle-aged to me. Seven fill for Mike. Oh, he yeah. clips the head pin. Big, big, big spare by Mike, who gives himself a chance with either a huge fill or one more mark to take this match away from Danny, who has been in control for most of it. Again, he will need a 128 to tie it, a 129 to win it. He will win the, the fifth game but he will lose the match 10-4 if he doesn't win total. Big ball! Will he get them all? No. But he does get a extremely large 19, and I believe that's it, folks. I think Mike Fabrizio Smith just won this match. Even if he misses this, I think he is at 552. He brings it in, and Mike Fabrizio Smith showing why he's the defending C South champion. A match he was losing the, almost the entire time, throws three marks in a row, finishes with a 17 in the eighth, a 19 in the ninth, and whatever he gets here, but he doesn't even need it. This one's already over. They're gonna clear the, the gutter wood just to, you know, cause that's what you do in this situation. But this match is over folks. Fabrizio Smith winning the last game and total is gonna win this match eight to six today doing exactly what I said, where he only won two strings, but he won them by enough that he is gonna win total eight to six. Dave Peterson and Wayne Bullock at home with size of relief potentially right now, but they'll still need to go up there and win some games on their own. Oh, Fabrizio Smith buried a three fill and knocked the light out. I know why that happened, it's because Mike, you're still going to want to fix that fill for the score sheet purpose. It's a three. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so final tallies here from South Yarmouth, Mass. It is Mike Fabrizio Smith, 556. Danny Finn, 551. A match that was controlled by Danny almost the whole way. Hold on, let me just uh, do a little more uh, uh, maintenance here. Danny Finn had it taken right from under him. 
a match he probably deserved to win, but the defending Sea self champ showed exactly why he is that and takes the last game with a 133, wins by 19, and wins the game 556 to 551. Unbelievable match. Thank you all for tuning in. I am Peter Ricciatelli. The bowlers were Mike Fabrizio Smith and Danny Finn. What a match here from South Yarmouth today. We'll see you next time. There's, matches will be coming fast and furious down the stretch as we are moving fast and furious towards the playoffs in Atlanta Candlepin Singles Tour. Tune in next time. We'll see you then.